News tonight with Peter. Begin tonight with tomorrow in China. Given the international dateline, it is already another working day in China, a day on which Chinese students in search of political reform intend to challenge their government by demonstrating in various cities. The government has warned them not to do it, but the students said they would march again unless the Communist Party met with their legitimate leaders. The party refused. ABC's Todd Carroll is in Beijing. The students were out on street corners today trying to win converts with tape recordings of their demands for political freedom, even though the government has rejected their ultimatum for a meeting with top party leaders. The government spokesman called the students naive and warned them not to stage more mass demonstrations. But mixed in with all the tough talk, there was also sweet talk to try to win over a generation critical to China's future. We must be extremely cautious, those young students which we love and cherish very much. But the students reacted with defiance, announcing that demonstrators from at least 40 universities in the capital and more from around the nation are preparing to march tomorrow. The police are preparing to try and stop them, cordoning off the Great Hall of the People and sealing off Tiananmen Square. The students still aim to push aside the limits on free expression in this society. The government still must decide how far to let them go. Todd Carroll, ABC News, Beijing. Despite all the attention which the students are getting in many parts of the world, there is no indication yet that they're having a meaningful impact on government policy, or really that they've ignited a genuine spark in the general population. It is still something of a lonely struggle. ABC's Richard Threlkeld is in China. They are China's best and brightest, these students, the doctors and diplomats and teachers of tomorrow young communists many of them and for going on three weeks now they have confounded the communist leadership demanding a new and better china in peaceful and persistent mass protest there's precedent here students have been china's catalyst of change for most of this century they're sophisticated and well informed these students they know there's a democratic spring already budding elsewhere in the communist world it makes it very difficult for the chinese leadership to persuade the intelligentsia of China, that somehow the Chinese communists are different and they cannot let their people have it. The students are getting a lot of sympathy and some support from the Lao Beijing, the common people, who are fed up with ever higher prices and widespread corruption, which most people think goes all the way to the top. Those sentiments are not confined to the capital. Walk around People's Park in Shanghai, for instance, and ask people what they think about what the students are doing. I think it's quite good. It can declare to the world that there are some people really very clear in their mind in our country. About change. About change, yeah. Not everyone are sleeping. Some people, they are weak. Is corruption a problem? Yes, corruption really? is also uh, maybe in, in our leaders. In high, some in higher ranks, maybe. The students is very eager to make the China much stronger and much richer. But, so, but they think the government steps are too slow. So far, Deng Xiaoping, China's leader and the man who's begun to liberate the Chinese economy, has refused to do the same for China's political system, which remains as repressive as ever. Now China's people have suddenly developed an appetite for some political freedom to go along with their new, more open economy. The students are saying you can't have one without the other. What we are witnessing just now is yet another Chinese revolution, the revolution of rising expectations. Richard Threlkeld, ABC News, Beijing. We stay in the Far East. In South Korea, student demonstrations can be vicious. And six policemen have been killed, ten more critically injured in the port city of Busan. Students battle police on the street with Molotov cocktails as always. Meanwhile, other students held five policemen hostage in a school library, and still other police tried to free them. They climbed over a barricade that had been drenched with paint thinner, and they died when the students set the barricades on fire. South Korea's President No Tae-woo said such violent acts endanger democracy, and he said he may impose emergency methods to stop them. In a moment, President Bush refuses to change his views on short-range missiles in Europe and the NATO alliance. And also on the broadcast tonight, the latest report card on education in the U.S. 
the grade is Oliver North is found guilty on three counts, not guilty on nine. After another last-minute delay, the space shuttle Atlantis is up and away.